everybody so welcome to another edition of knowledge graph technology showcase winter edition where i go through some of the cool tools and services that are out there so that you don't necessarily have to reach out to that salesperson unless you really want to all right and these are all my honest review these are not sponsored and if i miss something that you really want to see reviewed make sure you link it down below and today we are going to be talking about a tool from Synaptica called Graphite. Now, there are some ontology-like knowledge graph pieces to it, but today we're really gonna focus on that taxonomy aspect. So if any of you out there are taxonomists or you're trying to merge your taxonomy into a knowledge graph, this is certainly a tool you wanna check out. In a nutshell, we hopefully help people to organize, categorize, and discover their enterprise knowledge. Uh, we support many different kinds of knowledge models. And then we take, you know, uh, we talk about knowledge organization systems, which ironically, the acronym is CHAOS, which it's the opposite of CHAOS, <laughs> I hope. Um, so in ontology, you know, we talk about the schema and defining class types and problems. Mm relationships mm -hmm. we talk about taxonomies as the specific concepts that classes mm -hmm. and named individuals mm -hmm. and you'll see in graphite that it's fairly seamless in the way that we approach this problem so often um when you're only in the taxonomy space you're not as familiar with the ontology rdf and it might be a little scary to get into it but i think tools like yours kind of ease that transition because it's it's like a taxonomy but not and then it helps them grow in their expertise in the other types of uh models that you can do right and that's that's exactly right that's exactly what we're going for and we position ourselves as a part of a hub and spoke model uh once you are so this is graphite and once you're logged into the system so we have uh, very robust uh, groups and and user permission model in this particular um in this particular demo space i've got several projects here project isn't you know it's it's based on permissions and then within and based on those permissions i can see certain particular schemes and load them in there but these schemes mm -hmm. are available to the entire system and that's sort of why mm -hmm. i'm I'm going to show you several projects as you can see that we've got some fairly standard um, taxonomies and thesauri and ontologies in here. We've got Google products, uh, North American uh, class of product classification. We've got the mm -hmm. APQC process and mm -hmm. all these are publicly available Gemit. But if I go through several projects, I can surface them in different ways. I can say, well, you know, I've kind of organized my projects around topics, sort of topics, mm -hmm. science mm -hmm. and medicine. And I got a lot of schemes in here, but you can see I'm surfacing some of the same ones. There's Gemit mm -hmm. again, but I have some different one. I've got the, the GACS, agri, agri semantics vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, I've got OSTI, I've got MeSH. Um, I've got a few little, these are very tiny little schemes in SCOS and OWL about chemistry. So Aaron, when you say scheme, do you mean, can I translate that to say control vocabulary or what? Absolutely, yeah. Sorry okay. to use our own jargon. The reason I put these two in a project together is so that I could, you know, I could bridge because mm -hmm. there's a lot of overlap between UNESCO mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. GEMIT. So here I'm using the same as to kind of map some of the same terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and this also the Gemit thesaurus shows very nicely because it is a large vocabulary filled mm -hmm. with um, multilingual labels. And these mm -hmm. labels, you can see, I've got all these preferred and alternative labels in different languages. I've got definitions nice. in different languages. Um, so you know, we do full character support. So you can, you know, obviously with Chinese and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And and Aaron, for that same out is. is that something that you would have to do manually or is there some automation that's also available it's good that you mentioned that because one of the big projects that we do have on our roadmap we have done this for our kms tool we have a very mm -hmm. powerful auto matching tool in kms mm -hmm. where you can put into mm -hmm. vocabularies and do cross mapping so we've mm -hmm. been working really hard to bring bring this to include some of those things that kms did well which mm -hmm. is auto match if i could give some one little piece of advice is um, having a confidence score on on the matches would be very helpful because in the taxonomy world, you can have Jupiter and another one that says Jupiter, but they actually mean one is the uh, Roman God and the other is the planet. So having a confidence score based on probably some of the other metadata you have would be very helpful. Working to build that out to include things like that, like confidence oh, scores and surrounding yeah. concepts that give it more mm. context and things. Mm -hmm. I've been playing around with building out this thing I've called the Bontology. And also, I, <laughs> I have to say, I think it's a pretty clever name if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, and it's kind of timely, you know, we got this new James yeah. Bond film. Yeah. And so it's it's fun. It's kind of fun just to play with this and build this out because 
basically what I treated this whole ontology as was an exercise in building from the ground up. Well, one of the things that we can do, and I'll show you this this visualizer. So we worked on a visualizer, um, I guess two years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, we really tried to build this out, and this is at the scheme level. Mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, this is the project level where it shows all the schemes. And what's nice about this is, you know, I can, you know, actually get in here and manipulate this and kind of get a view and we sort of encourage people that as they're modeling, this is not a bad place, even without, even with zero yep. concepts in it, mm -hmm. you can model just to see if the thing makes any sense or not. Mm -hmm. But it kind of helps you to get to that modeling and we, we show this at every level. So if I go down mm -hmm. to the characters level, then I'm looking at, just those schemes. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't connect to a scheme, it won't show here. And I've got that same functionality mm -hmm. where I could, and here I don't have any unused relationships. And I can also print this out. I can get some information about the scheme here. So here at the at the top level for characters, you can see some information about the scheme. Um, you know, mm -hmm. what's what templates are used and uh, templates is specific to our system. I'll show you uh, kind of what that is, is I kind of going to go through the user workflow first and then talk mm -hmm. about admin mm -hmm. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, and it tells you about the metadata, how many terms are in here, um, you know, and gives you this little chart of, you know, what status, how many are mm -hmm. in your status. Export, we can export mm -hmm. in a variety of different ways. Um, we just added something called pathways, this one here, where it shows the path. This was a, a client request specific. Mm -hmm. Not everybody needs this, and that's why it's a, a checkable option. Um, so like the hierarchical path? That's right, all within oh, okay. one cell and in the output, mm -hmm. right? And it's got it mm -hmm. because that's what they needed. They needed to see the mm -hmm. entire chain. Yep. Um, then we can import, obviously, in um, spreadsheets or RDF. Mm -hmm. We also have some control vocabulary validations where nice. we can check for circular references, top mm -hmm. concepts, and hierarchical orphans identified. This is a great that. function, too. If somebody is working with multiple taxonomies, um, there was a, a major company that had talked to me about taxonomies because they had all these different um, departments and they all had different taxonomies and they were trying to bring them all together. And some were more like categories and just like children underneath it and that's all it was. Others were true hierarchies and having a tool like this would give them that health report to send back and hopefully get those taxonomies updated. Right, exactly. Or I'm looking at a at an individual concept. Of course, it's the Bontology, so we'll look at James Bond. I can see that by virtue of these templates, and a template is a way of binding properties and relationships together and restricting them. And you can mix and match templates. Mm -hmm. So if if I look here, I've got particular relationships, I've got particular fields. Mm -hmm. If I if I add a template. So I've got a governance template here, and what that will do is add a bunch of approver comments, editor mm. comments, mm. do not edit. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are, you know, these are bound in that template. You can either import or create new properties and relationships, and then bind them together as in a template um, mm -hmm. and give that template a name and reuse that template across. Right. Them. So the relationships here are bound by those templates and those relationships between the schemes, right? So character has film, character has gadget. Um, and I can add things. And we do have a type ahead version mm, here where we can nice. add relationships, which is really nice because if you're dealing in really large vocabularies, yeah. um, we have a drag and drop um, mm -hmm. where I can drag from here. So I can take that same thing and character has vehicle. I can drag it. You can see it's already in there, but I could drag mm -hmm. and drop it over there. You know, when you're dealing with very large vocabularies and you're trying to drag and drop, it becomes a little tedious. So having this yes. type ahead is, that is nice. nice. So Aaron, you did mention large vocabularies. Um, what's the ballpark of how big this tool can handle since hierarchies, if they're not done well, can yeah. over load of visual and so as far as what it can handle without breaking um, there's really no limit um mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. do put sort of false restrictions that are adjustable on this because of exactly what you're saying you know mm -hmm. i can list a million terms here but i don't <laughs> think i want to yeah and so we put we put an uh, um an out of the box restriction of i think it's a i think it's a thousand if I'm recalling, mm -hmm. but that's adjustable. If you want to mm -hmm. see 10,000, you can see 10,000 in the hierarchy. Okay, that's good where to know. We, where we really maintain um, that restriction though, and this is, I mean, quite frankly, this is about uh, you know, UI and your perception to- Yeah, this is the UI, UI, not the back end. Yeah. And, and whether, um, it, it, but 
also performance on those visualizations we have a tap on the visualizations because mm -hmm. it it doesn't it doesn't help anybody to visualize 10,000 concepts <laughs> i mean it's just it, it's not useful and so we can I mean you could but yeah it's you not could. <laughs> you could um but yeah it's it's um so we cap that visualization like if i go in here so the james bond relationships there's a lot of relationships mm -hmm. and to keep this performant and to keep this looking nice you know now i can do a bunch of different things on this visualization much more than the scheme level mm -hmm. where i can i can pick different ways i can re i can just expand things. Mm -hmm. I can refocus where each thing I click opens a new thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a bunch of functionality here too, where I can say, okay, show me my collections. I can show resource types. See, they're all SCOS, so that mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. you can start to see why maybe you don't want to see everything because yeah. it really yeah. gets a little crazy. There are uh, people that I know for sure watch these videos that have very large like hundreds of thousands of terms um but th that doesn't mean this tool can't handle it it just means you have to break it up into because i mean that's how you would work with it anyways it is in right. you know chunks and branches and stuff so you know that's the only reason i pointed out so i was showing you some of these relationships here too we have another function here called a property path and a property path what that does is when you create a relationship so it's got a relationship to daniel craig and Daniel Craig, the concept has a photo in it. Mm -hmm. And I am grabbing that property and pulling it into this so that it displays here as well. That's so it's nice, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. Short putting. And, yeah. you know, if I remove Daniel Craig from this, you can see that, yeah, the photo is gone. And, and it can pull in, you can see that by adding these things, it's also pulling in Wikipedia page property. It's, uh, you, nice. know, you can do this with any, it can be um, an image. And is it automatically it. grabbing those? Based on it, the you, you do have to set up property pass because it's something okay. that you have to determine what is it you want to pull and from which scheme. Uh, and then we've got a linked data description. And of course, mo I'm guessing most of the users are familiar with linked data, but this links yeah. out to the DBpedia page. And so as you can see too, I've got a lot of alt labels. I've got a definition. It's kind of doing double duty because I've already mm -hmm, pulled mm -hmm. data, but I've got those in there. Mm -hmm. um, and w when we get down to the metadata, you can see I've got some out of the box statuses here, mm -hmm, candidate mm -hmm. approved, list withdrawn, and then a little information here um, about the concept itself. You know, yeah, and I like that view audit trail too because if you have a very large team working in something or multiple departments working on something, uh, and somebody makes an oopsie. Having an audit trail is very helpful. Okay. I don't want to go to the back end to add a new property mm -hmm. where I can say, because all of this exists, exists on the back end, the namespace and all of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where I can go back and I can pick one of these things and then I can add a pro. I want to, so I have um, want to show you what, what this really looks like if a user is out, you know, using it from another system, because as I mentioned, we're kind of going for the hub and spoke mm -hmm. model. People mm -hmm. typically working in other systems. And because No Time to Die is the new James Bond movie, mm -hmm. I've got a wiki, the uh, uh, Confluence wiki. Yeah, it allows users then to tag a page, but also to see mm -hmm. it coming back in here. So we're starting to get a little bit of that information pushed back into this system. You know, I, I've got this page, and as you can see, you know, it's got usual Confluence kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see here, there's several ways that I can look at the information too. So for the actors, you know, we've got the browsable and I can choose whether I want to have these or not. Mm -hmm. um, this browsability, it can just be pure type ahead if I want. But I know that Daniel Craig was an actor in this and this is going to get pushed. If I look for another actor and I say, well, Rami Malek was in it and I don't come up with that, I mm -hmm. can hit the plus and that suggests it in the suggested, um, in the candidate state, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back in scheme that I've designated. I won't give away too much about No Time to Die in case people haven't seen it. I don't want any spoilers, <laughs> all right? Yeah, but please, because I want to go, I think that's what I'm going to watch this weekend. <laughs> oh yeah, I won't spoil anything for you. The only thing I'm going to say is that it has a concept of nanobots in it. And so mm -hmm. if I start to type, I say, well, you know, that's not in here. Um, so I'm going to add it again, just like just like I did with the uh, with Malik. Um, I'm going to add that as a suggested concept, right? You can see the page has now been tagged, right? Mm -hmm. If I go back to Graphite, there are those concepts and mm -hmm. they are following this principle. They are part of essentially this page, No Time to mm -hmm. Die, has become mm -hmm. part of these schemes, right? They mm -hmm. are real nodes. And this makes for a great workflow because if I come in here, I can enter this workflow in a variety of ways. If I'm, um, if I, I could go in and review the pages, 
and go straight to it and say, you know, nanobots. Well, actually, nanobots, I know this isn't going to be a true alt label, so forgive me, <laughs> but the name of the weapon was called Project Heracles. And within the Bond world, I'm going to say these are equivalents. That's not 100% <laughs> true. I'm bending the a rules. A modeling code. decision. A modeling decision. That's right. Um, so I can, I can just add that in there and change it. Um, and then if I go to, you know, where that concept is, it was under gadgets, it's the gadgets, and then that that puts it in there um, mm -hmm. it, as a new concept. And now as a taxonomist, I've put it in the right place. If a lot of things get suggested, um, we have this concept of a saved query. And a saved query is I've set up a search and I'm going to re-trigger this and I'm going to run it. And what this saved query is, show me all of the new, and I can just look at the parameters here in search, Show me all of the things that were created on 1126 or after, mm -hmm. and I can go through and then run those through a review process. Mm -hmm. I could do something like do an entire batch edit and just say, oh, yep, that's yep, nice. they'll look great approved. Right? <laughs> I could do something like that. So mm -hmm. that means that this will take me to an admin area. When I look at this, I have taken that query and I'm saying, mail it to my work address as a CSV. Oh, it's like work items, that's nice. So the namespace and predicate admin is a place where I can create from scratch, like I did with the Bontology. You know, I mm -hmm. made properties and relationships and I typed them in with my hands <laughs> and I just mm -hmm. created them from scratch. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I need character has film. That makes sense, right? And I can go in here and I can customize the URI. I can leave it just, mm -hmm. just defaults to whatever the system is. Mm -hmm. I could give it an inverse. I can, I can do those things. What I can also do is say, I have a publicly available ontology and I'm going to drag it in here as an RDF mm -hmm. file. And I'm going to pull those properties and relationships. I'm going to identify them, what's mm -hmm. in the file, what's already in my system, and bring them into the system. Each, I've created several templates here, and as you can see, these are the properties and relationships available to this template. Then I've built a bunch of schemes here, and I've said here in this scheme, I want the properties and relationships available to this scheme from these templates. And so mm -hmm. I've, I've got the governance ones here. I've said, yeah, I want to make those available. I want the alt label the definition. The, um, and so we've got our relationships here between, you know, and this is what's restricting those relations between schemes mm -hmm. is to say, mm -hmm. you can only have these relationships between particular schemes. Once though that setup is done, that's when you can go into the front end and populate with, yep. with the actual taxonomy values. So I'm going to go back and log in as a role which has system admin privileges and mm -hmm. then I can see all the permissions they have. As you can see with a with this system admin role, I can see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and if I go back into that ontology, then we can get really granular with these schemes and I can mix and match the projects and these granular permissions. We do have clients who are like, I basically have a top secret project that nobody can know about. <laughs> How do I hide it from them? Yeah. So they, to do yep, that. Yep. Yep. Right. So is this talking directly to GraphDB and it's actually creating those triples behind the scenes? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. But if I go in there and I can visualize all of this, I mean, Graphite is really the rules engine and the UI for a text mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. top of that because mm -hmm. all of this is going through there. So it goes back into the graph database yeah. correctly. Yeah. So all of this is writing back to, to graph DDM. And then I think that's good context too, because I think that there are other, you know, pure taxonomy tools out there that yes, you can model something in a graph like way, but it doesn't actually write it back to a graph database as it is graph data. Now, you know, are, are you um, asking a taxonomist to be an ontologist and a graph person per se? No, I think that that's where these templates come in to play, where you might have somebody that is an admin saying, OK, I'm going to enforce these rules so the SMEs or the taxonomists that, that aren't admins don't have to worry about the graph stuff. I'm just going to give that uh, form to them and the graph stuff will happen behind the scenes.